everybody it's Adam here from A3 Outdoor Adventures um, I don't even know what day it is let me check it's December 19th uh, so what is A3 Outdoors been doing for the last two or three weeks well I've been out deer hunting for the opener um, up north with Pierre uh, I've been ended the northern duck hunt ended the southern duck hunt uh, goose is closed right now until December 22nd and that will reopen so I'll be able to get back out in the fields, uh, but I've been out there. I've been deer hunting. I uh, didn't see any deer shot. Uh, Pierre got his deer without me. A uh, real nice deer. We went to some public land, uh, tried to get some antlerless deer. And, uh, just missed them. It was close. Uh, so we've been looking for deer and turkey, and once goose opens, we'll be back out. Uh, but for now, it's time to take a look at the duck boat and fix what we broke this year. Every year, uh, you get done, take a look at your boat, things break. So right now, we're looking at my duck boat. It's just a 14 foot, 14 and a half foot aluminum John boat. I bought it from Pierre a while ago. He's had it a very long time. And this boat might have the most walleyes ever caught in it from where me and Pierre grew up. Uh, yeah, we grew up walleye fishing and, and that's what we do. But for now, you can see I got a crack right there. Not good. There's another crack right there. Not good. You can see I tried to screw it together as we we're riding this year. And actually, right by the mud skipper transom out, it cracked there and it cracked on the other side, creating four cracks in my transom. So what happens with these mud motors is they're just lawnmower motors. Um, come from Thailand, they work really good. Just gotta be very careful how you set it up. I probably have taken this one off three or four times this year for it comes out of adjustment very easily and um, the boat won't move. And it took me and my dad a long time to figure this out. What happens with these mud skipper mud motors or any type of mud motor that you buy off brand um, the actual transom mount isn't built good enough to hold the surface drive motor hanging off the end. So let's take another look. Alright, so we got here is a Mud Skipper 13 horse surface drive. It's about three years old. Underneath is what they give you for a transom mount. And as you can see, I have lots of weird things going on here that we will talk about why I have done this and specific reasons why I have to have these things in there to make the boat actually go forward. And here's a front shot of the transom mount. Also along with this mud motor, I have actually cracked the stabilizing fin this year by hitting a log right there where the flashlight is where I have bolted a piece of aluminum so I can fix it. Yeah, uh, there's the crack. It goes right from the weld down to the lightning hole. All right, so what we got here is a side picture of the transom. And if you see this piece of wood I have in here, if I take this piece of wood out, this transom mount will fail because this whole surface drive is cantilevered off the back of the boat and we don't have enough clamping force which should go from the top all the way down to support this big cantilever we have. So what happens when I drive and I hit something, the motor comes up like it's supposed to and then it comes down and then the actual clamps that lock the transom mount to the boat will slip and this straight piece here would actually be into my duck boat and you can see that. Right there, right there, you see that? If I didn't have that piece of steel above there, that support would have gone straight through my duck boat. So, what happens 
you take this piece of wood out, it changes the whole pitch of this motor, it swings it into the boat, taking your motor and tips it. So you can actually not propel yourself forward, it will try to propel the boat up and out of the water and you will be dead in the water, not moving. And this has happened to me two or three times this year out there and luckily a couple times Pierre was with me to actually physically pick the motor up, put it back down and reclamp it to have it as parallel as we could to the ground. So I'm hoping all these fixes I'm going to do, the supports, the welding, the grinding, the cutting, um, I got rubber for dampening and this should work and I'm very confident it will work so stay tuned. So what I got are a couple little drawings I just um, sketched up real quick. Uh, this is the motor, surface drive unit coming down, this is the shaft. Right now I'm going to be creating this upper support because right now on my mud motor I don't have an upper support. I only have a bottom fin. I don't like the way that was designed with the large um, lightning holes. Uh, they're too close to the edge of metal and they also crack. Um, a little closer view, here is the piece I will be making. The basic dimension is more of a complex shape, um, but I believe this will all be worth it. So here we go. As you can see, I have lightly drawn out the profile that I want for my piece of metal. And I use this little protractor to get nice rounds and remove all my sharp points so we don't fracture when that motor is shaking back there. Alright. And up top here, I used the bottom of a paint can, one gallon, to put that nice bend in there. A nice arc. Now let's cut it out. So here I took the piece and I stuck it on there to make sure it fits. It fits the way I like it. I will be adding a cavitation plate. Um, the cavitation plate will actually slide into this um, top support and be welded on. So to make a template uh, for the bottom stabilizer bump piece there was pretty simple. Um, just was able to trace the piece already on there, remove the lightning holes, and add just a little length to underneath the transmission there. So on to the next piece. So the next piece I'll be making will be this little front bump guard on the Yep, the front of the transmission between the transmission and the, the transom. I just want to protect that a little bit, breaking ice and some sticks and stuff. So, um, and I want to make, I want to run this front brace and blend it in with my, with my bottom support. And this will eventually be one piece of metal. What I'm going to do is we'll be welding tabs onto the shaft and I'll be bolting through underneath and end on top to remove the supports. That's the idea and um, but for now we're going to make um, this front piece. put on 
on the front guard as you can see I just stuck it on there some more tape and that will be become one piece when I go to cut this out of steel so I really don't want any bolts right there I want one chunk that'll bolt on the front of the transmission to a tab that I'll be putting on that'll bolt onto the bottom of the shaft and then the top piece will also be bolting on the reason I'm going this way get rid of all these welds and be welding tabs with through holes for bolting things do break and I'd rather be able to unbolt something and rebolt a new piece and be done so the last piece that I will be making out of cardboard will be the cavitation plate and it's probably the more complex of what I have to make but here we go So I added the cutout of the cavitation plate on top for my steel cutouts I will be making. I have some 11 gauge A36 steel I bought and I got some thicker steel for um, the tabs that will be welded on for through bolts. For right now this looks good to me and I can adjust it uh, as I need. And But for the next step we'll be taking the motor part and seeing what's going on inside with that. And then getting to the transom and ripping the whole back of everything of that boat off. All right, it's Adam here from A3 Outdoor Adventures. Um, after we got all the the metal mocked up with the cardboard, going to take the uh, open up the transmission of the motor, see what's going on in there. I know the springs probably probably be off, and then this motor, the spring comes off all the time to keep the chain tight. I bought probably three or four springs. And I don't think one of them stayed on there, so that's another issue. I have to fix this here is keeping the chain tension spring actually working. So I'm going to open this thing up and uh, we'll see what's in there. Adam here well I got the uh, cover off the transmission and tension springs on there so one out of four one out of five it's on there so um, there's actually oil in it too it didn't leak it took me a long time to get the seal off it I put on there uh, the seal that comes with it uh, just toss it in the garbage it does doesn't seal at all or do anything so you're gonna have to go out get a get a tube of some seal and put it on there and squish it down real good so this is probably the first time in three years it hasn't leaked oil and I never liked it leaking oil in the marshes and finally got it to stop. So that looks really good. I'm happy. So keep on moving. Sitting here cleaning all this stuff. Uh, just wondered, Pierre, maybe we should show the viewers of this turkey we shot. Oh my. Look at that beard, huh? Got a little salt on there from dipping her, but that's turkey beard, huh?
she will. She will. So we got the uh, oil drained. We got the cover off. The transmission. We're going to take the shaft off the surface drive. We're going to try to take the transmission off the motor. <laughs> As you can see, I got the, the back of the surface drive off. Uh, two broken bolts, I mount the stuff together, so that's surprising. Uh, looks like the weld nuts broke, so I'll probably take those off and put through bolts and seal them up so those don't break. But the next thing would be to probably unhook the throttle and um, start, start cutting zip ties. But one thing, all right, now one thing about these motors is this throttle on them breaks a lot. And that's because, as you can see, when you pull it, it creates a real 90 degree bend in there. This one's probably broken on me three times this year. So do not buy this style, it is junk. Uh, it'll break on you. You'll be out in the marsh and it'll break. So I always carry a bunch of um, spare cables with me to feed them through. This will be changed out to a regular um, brake handle off a bicycle. Go on Amazon, buy yourself one. So we'll be doing that. But the next step would be to cutting all these zip ties, uh, taking this wiring off and taking the motor off and the handle. To day one here we're about four or five hours later uh, designed some supports got those cut out on nice cardboard so i can get those on steel took the motor off uh, down to the mount what we want to do is i gotta get all the way down into the transom i gotta take the transom wood off i gotta take all the bolts out that support the transom we gotta redo this transom to uh, fix that we got while dog hunting the last three years with this john boat so we're gonna have to do some supporting and Day one comes to an end. Thanks for watching.